YCS Osaka 2024. Pretty insane stuff. Japan doesn't get as many YCSs as we here in Europe and in the States and even South America get. Like, South America actually gets a lot. But there's, I think, about one or two YCSs a year. So it's a huge event. And because there's so many Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh! players, you get an event like this with 4,000 duelists. I think the last one was Kyoto, if I'm not mistaken. That was like 5,000 people, which was the biggest card game event ever. 4,000 duelists battling it out with only one taking it all. And I believe they only do it for one day. There's not even day two in these tournaments, which is insane. We have um, Rio taking the number one place with Ryzeal. And as you can see from the pie chart here, and we've made a lot of videos about this in the channel with the OCG meta reports, Ryzeal is the best deck. And it's mainly because the other decks have been impacted so, so much. We have eight Ryzeals in the top 16, which is 50% representation. You want to call it tier zero? You may. One Labyrinth, two Tenpai, and then one of each. Memento White Forest, which is actually Snake Eyes, Magistus, which is actually Ryzeal, Runic, and Malice. Malice, very disappointing in this tournament. Um, you can check out the VODs over on YouTube. The stream is still live. But let's break down the metagame using this tournament and see how these decks are built and how they perform. This is the winning deck list. Very classic. The idea is to spam as many level fours onto the board and get access to, of course, Deadnator, which is a huge boss monster that can pop up to three, four, five times even a turn when your opponent activates an effect, accompanied by tons of hand traps and a lot of non-engine. Bonfire is at one. This is also a starter. And of course, so many really, really good Xyz monsters that are fours. We got Exodon. You got Degarius. You got Baguska. It's very easy to understand why this deck does so well. In my opinion, it's like extremely boring in terms of design because it's like summon one, summon two, summon three, make Xyz. It's kind of boring. But this is a deck that is super full power. Wave one of release, by the way, in a deck building set, which is pretty rare. And the other decks in the meta are just so impacted. Like the Sinful Spoil stuff, Snake Eye stuff are limited to, to hell. And... You know, this is what's left. A very good combo deck that runs a ton of non-engine. This was actually the second place, Labyrinth. And this is obviously a very good pick for this event because the Labyrinth engine is amazing. There's room for a lot of non-engine. And cards like Dominus Impulse, Dimensional Barrier, and Destructive Drew and Karma Cannon directly mess up with Ryzeal's plan, which everybody knew was the best deck coming into this event. Um, we got the extravagance ratios here, nothing special in the extra deck, but the fact that they're really just prioritizing getting to a D barrier or a Karma Cannon and just take it all in turn three. This is basically what Labyrinth does. Big Welcome is semi limited, doesn't really matter. We're playing three Arianas, which also is kind of rare, and three Ladies as well. Um, just because you're playing a pretty heavy trap build, you want to make sure you have a Lady at all times on the board. Once you get that engine rolling, it is what it is. Third place, Tenpai Dragon. Not very surprising. However, considering the fact that Sangin Summoning and Chandra are at one, it is questionable. However, you can see that the recently semi-limited Gold Sarcophagus is making a comeback because you can use this to banish Blaster. And if it is banished, you can add a Fire Dragon monster from your deck to your hand. So... This is essentially a starter for this deck, which is great. Ultimate Slayers, text that honestly has have come from the TCG. This is like a definitely a TCG take. And all the Mulcharmies in the world, at least we don't see the side deck here, but know the new Graveyard Mulcharmy in the main. Um, but relatively straightforward as it is. This is pretty interesting. Ryzeal Voiceless Voice. I mean, technically... You can start off it. I don't think they bridge together, if I'm not mistaken. Like, there's no... You can see that there's no 7th Tachyon here, but I don't think you can bridge the two engines together. This is the new rank 4 out of Supreme Darkness. 
generic two level fours. If it's exceeds summon, you can treat it a rank four monster you control as a level four for material, for this card's material. So you can actually overlay this onto another exceeds monster. And battle effect, if this card is in the graveyard, you can target two other rank four or lower in your graveyard and you special summon one and you attach the other. Very, very strong. Very strong. So you get an Omni Negate engine onto the board and um, is detonator light? Yeah, it's light. So maybe you can protect it a little bit. It's obviously pyro, but yeah, there could be some synergy there. Lance has here for Malice. I don't think they ever used it in the tournament. And this is the White Forest deck that you've seen on the list. This is how Snake Eyes is now played. Um, it's, you have so many limited cards with Ash, Poplar, Witch, Bonfire, and Wanted. All limited. I hate the OCG's philosophy on, on ban lists, but this deck uh, looks very messy, but it did manage to top one in 4,000 people. Um, the lines are basically Sylvie accesses um, the new Azamina LZ, which you can use to make Arciella, sync these two together, then in the graveyard, this card, when it's used for synchro material, searches a Sinful Spoils card, which is, of course, Deception, and Deception gets you access to Diabal Star, which gets you access to Ash, and it's full combo. So, Sylvie is full combo, LZ is full combo, Ash is full combo, Wanted, Bonfire, Witch, Deception, yeah, you get it. This is interesting. I'm really excited and wondering when we're going to get the Magistus cards. Maybe as imports in one of the next sets. I'm not really sure because these cards are very cool. Uh, we have Spoon here, which is um, a searcher. This card as a Magistus from deck to hand. So this allows you to access more level 4s. So it's essentially more pseudo starters because these can make the new Chirazo, uh, which you can see right here. It's also a level four that you can just contact fuse from the deck and then you just rank up and you start your combo. And lastly, another one of a kind in the top 16. Interesting. Let's see what, what they have here. So obviously anti-meta, we see this come up often in the TCG as well. They do have three card of demise. They do have one runic fountain. Um, three border is the only monster, and then just runics, runics, runics. But some more stun cards. D fissure, one messenger of peace, synchro zone, of course. So, uh, soul drain, monsters that are banished and or in the graveyard cannot activate their effects. The band played on. Neither player can special summon monsters with the same level as those they control. So this is a card that you can actually tech out against things like Ryzeal. This was popular back when. Sprite was getting good because they need to summon one level two and then summon the other. But if they already control a level two, they cannot summon more level twos. So this is definitely a tech for those Xyz decks. Um, goes in rivalry, Tikaboo, and of course, Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. So this was YCS Osaka, 4,000 duelists. Half of them in the top cut are Ryzeal duelists. We can see that I think Ryzeal is definitely a very, very, very good deck. It has a strong engine, good on wave one of support, and also can host a ton of non-engine as well. But I think the success that it's currently seeing in the OCG as a little bit of an asterisk, right, is mostly because the other decks are just so hit on the forbidden and limited list. This is why I think there's so much success for Ryzo because it's just a complete deck. It does one thing really well. It plays so much non-engine. And the engine is all like one-card combos. And this is like the most boring shit in Yu-Gi-Oh! currently. Um, so this is why, I think. But maybe I'm wrong. So correct me in the comments below. Uh, and this was YCSJ Osaka. Happy to see this once in a while. Super interesting to see. It's like 4,000 duelists and one comes on top. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.